Hi, this is Bobby Joe Holman, and welcome to play harmonica in one hour. Now, in the next few minutes, I'm going to give you some examples, basic information, and the chance to play and enjoy the musical treasures and soulful expression that a harmonica has to offer. We're going to concentrate on three styles of music, starting with folk music like this great old tune. Now, of course, that was Shenandoah. Next, we're going to learn some country style playing. Of course, that was Oh Susanna. And finally, the style most of my students love to play the blues. In order to play along with me on this video, be sure that your harmonica is a C harmonica. Throughout the video, you will see this diagram at the bottom of the screen. As you can probably already tell, the ten boxes represent the ten holes on your diatonic harmonica. When I show you how to play a tune on my harmonica, the holes that I will be using will be highlighted by arrows. The up arrows mean blow, and the down arrows mean draw. Watch how this works as I play the tones C, E, G, C, E, G, C, E, G, C. When I draw my breath through the same ten holes, I'll get a different set of tones. D, G, B, D, F, A, B, D, F, A. Now, to help you to learn and play and enjoy the music on this video, I will often suggest that you pause and rewind the video so that you can become more familiar with what you've just learned before you go on to something new. So, when you see these words on your screen, please be sure to stop the video and carefully review the material that I've just covered. If you'll just add a few minutes of practicing on your own to the time that you spend watching me on this video, I think you'll be happier with the musical sounds that you can make in your first hour of playing the harmonica. In fact, we've designed the program so that you can add in some practicing and still finish the tape in about an hour, but take as long as you feel you need. Okay, by now I'm sure that you've played some with your harmonica, so now we're going to get down to how to play it. This starts, of course, with how you should hold your harmonica. There's a couple different ways, and the one that I want to show you, I call the open C. If you're right-handed, form a C with your left hand like this. Once you have your hand in a C like this, the other fingers are kind of rounded like this. Now, when you place it in there, you have to look at it, and you have to be able to read the numbers across the top. Now, don't worry. You won't have to read those numbers while you're playing your harmonica. The point is, if you can't see the numbers, your finger is too close to the edge of your harmonica. And there's not enough room for your lip to make a tight seal. And when that happens, well, listen. Hear the air hissing? That's simply because my finger's not in a good place. So I'm going to bring the harmonica out like this, so I can read all the numbers. Now listen to the sound. Okay, now I'm going to put the harmonica up to my lips, so you can see how my lips make a tight seal. See, no hissing or leaks. Finally, Cup your other hand around your harmonica like this. And you have the proper way to hold your harmonica. Now, I bet most people think that playing the harmonica is simply concerned with this little instrument. 
If you had two people take turns playing the same harmonica and one of them got a better sound and tone, that would be because that person understood how important their body was in creating a bigger instrument. Here's what I mean. I'm going to draw a plain tone. But now listen to what that same tone sounds like when I use my hands, drop my jaw, actually open my throat cavity area, and use my diaphragm. Maybe you thought I cheated a little there by drawing a little harder to intensify the sound, but I really didn't. The tone got better just because my body became the instrument. Now, you try it with me. Cup your hands. By closing your hands around the harmonica, you'll have a great control over the tone. Think of your body as your instrument, from your hands, down through your mouth, your jaw, your throat, your lungs, right down to your diaphragm. Okay, now keep that thought now as we draw on two together. Thinking of your body as your instrument is really the key to getting this soulful expression. Just like a singer, that expression is why I feel the harmonica is so popular. Your feelings, what you have in your heart and your soul can be projected through this instrument. When I got my first harmonica, it came with a little instruction book that showed a mouth covering four holes and a tongue covering three of them. The instructions explained that the air went around the side of the tongue and entered the open hole. Well, I tried it that way, and I couldn't do it the way that the booklet described it. So I just came up with my own pucker method, which is as easy as whistling. Just pucker up and put the harmonica up to your lips. Aim your breath so you only play one tone. Now, this will take a little bit of practice, but if you work at it, you'll get it just like I did. Practicing your pucker in front of a mirror will enable you to get a nice, clean tone. Then the next time you give it a try, you'll have a better image of what you're trying to do. Pause now and give it a try. Remember, pucker up and aim for a single tone. All right. Now that you can get a nice, clean tone, it's time to learn the first melody, Shenandoah. Beautiful, isn't it? Well, now you're going to play this song, and I want you to go about learning it the same way I always have learned new material myself. Dissect it. Take it one phrase at a time. In Shenandoah, there are five short phrases like that one. Now rewind the tape and practice with me a few times until you know it well. And here's the second phrase. The third phrase goes like this.
Here's the fourth phrase. And finally, here's the fifth phrase. I sure hope you've taken the time to learn each of these phrases before you went on to the next one. I really believe that you have to be secure, feel right with each phrase of a song before you go on to the next one. My philosophy is that a person playing the song should enjoy the music as much as the people listening to it. So if you only know ten songs or even one song, but if you play from your heart and your soul, you will enjoy the music tenfold, and so will your listeners. If you haven't done so already, go back now and work on Shenandoah one phrase at a time. Then put them all together and really enjoy playing this beautiful folk song along with me and the band. Once you're comfortable playing the song Shenandoah, you'll be ready to try it on your own with the band. Here's the band track all by itself. As before, listen to the clicks and start playing at the end of the drum intro. If you have any problems with the timing, rewind the tape and listen again to how I played it. And have fun. After a few minutes of playing your harmonica, you may feel out of breath. Well, the problem may not be the lack of breath, but poor posture. When you're sitting down playing, like I am, you have to have your stomach relaxed, open, so to speak, not pinched. Just remember, whenever you're sitting or standing, good posture is essential because you're asking your body to do something that it's not used to. And so, like anything else, you have to work at it. Now, when I played Shenandoah a few minutes ago, I used my hands and throat to add a technique called vibrato. Hand vibrato is done by opening and closing your hands. See how I did that? Now, you try it with me. Now, throat vibrato is a little trickier. You use it on draw notes by going Hear it? 
the other way to do throat vibrato is to use your diaphragm. You use this vibrato for blow notes. Now, let's combine the vibratos together on Shenandoah. Throat vibrato is one of the most rewarding techniques used in playing the harmonica. It takes time to develop a good even vibrato because you've got to get those muscles in your throat and diaphragm to do things they've never done before. You can practice this technique without the harmonica. I used to practice uh, while I was driving my car. Vibrato is a very important part of developing a soulful harmonica style because it makes the tones you play just really touch the hearts of your listeners. So, rewind the tape and listen carefully to how I use vibrato in Shenandoah. Then rewind the tape again and practice the vibrato along with me as we play Shenandoah together. Okay, our next country song is an old favorite by Stephen Foster, which is perfect for using country style techniques. Old Susanna. There are four phrases of Old Susanna, and here's the first phrase again, a little slower, so you can play it along with me. Now, the second phrase is almost the same as the first. Now, the third phrase goes like this. The final phrase is the same as the second phrase that you just learned. Now that we've taken her all apart, here's old Susanna all put back together again with the band. So again, once you feel secure playing Old Susanna, you can play it on your own along with the band. After the guitar pickup, the band will have seven beats of introduction before you begin playing. You can roll the tape back and check my performance if you need help getting the timing right.
The country effects that everybody wants to learn how to play is, of course, the train whistle. And the sound of the chugging train itself. Now the chugging train sound is started on the first three holes using the blow draw pattern. Draw, blow, draw, blow. Put them all together with a little chugging rhythm and you can hear the train a coming. Here's a case where that good posture has to be there. Your body can't be all tensed up because if it is, believe me, your train will run out of steam real quick. Now, to make the train whistle sound, you have to draw on number four and number five like this. One more time. And then you take your right hand and you wave it in front of the harmonica which breaks up the sound and makes it sound like the train's a long ways away coming to you. Can you hear it coming? The train whistle brings us to a very important technique that is used to lower the pitch. This technique is called tone bending. For example, I could take a G tone and bend it lower. That was G, F sharp, F. That's D to D flat. In order to bend tones on the harmonica, you do three things. Draw with a little more intensity, move your tongue back away from your teeth, and let your cheeks kind of come in a little bit. What happens when you bend a tone is you're slowing down the reed's vibrations a bit, and that's what lowers the pitch. You see, the slower the, the reed vibrations, the lower the pitch of the tone. With practice, your cheeks won't need to suck in as much because you've learned to control the bend with your tongue. When you first start learning how to bend tones, be careful not to overdo it. A lot of my students start off by drawing too hard and of course they kill their reeds and ruin their harmonica. So relax and don't overdo it. I'd say that most of my students come to me because they want to play the blues. I know in my case, the blues was the main reason that I got into playing the harmonica. There's just something about that soulful expression that a harmonica can produce when you're playing the blues. Whenever you hear harmonica players talking about the blues, you'll hear the terms straight harp and cross harp. Straight harp simply means that you are playing in the natural key of your harmonica. So far on this video, everything that we have played has been in straight harp because it's all been in the key of C and we're using a key of C harmonica. Now it's possible to play the blues in straight harp, but to me that's a very limiting way to do it. You see, there are only a few tones that sound soulful enough for the blues when you play straight harp. That's why most of the time the blues players use cross harp. Cross harp simply means that you're playing your harmonica in another key than its natural key. For example, listen as I play a blues phrase in the key of G using my C harmonica.
This diagram shows you the key of harmonica that you would use to play cross harp with any one of the 12 major keys for blues. Now normally you don't need a harmonica in all 12 keys to play with a band. After the C harmonica, the next most popular ones are the A, the D, the G, and the F. Chords are an important part of music. To play a chord, you simply play three or four tones at the same time. One of the great things about playing the blues is that it's based on just three chords. Here, I'll show you what I mean. These are the eight tones that make up the key of G. Now, to play the blues, the first chord that you need is the G chord. The starting tone of each chord is called its root, and the rest of the chord takes shape above this tone. So, to play a G chord on the harmonica, all you have to do is draw on the holes two, three, and four. Here, try it with me. Now, the low end of your harmonica is the only place that you can play all three of these tones together. The next chord in the blues is the C chord on the fourth note of the scale. The C chord is even easier to play than the G chord since we're using a C harmonica. Blowing any three holes will give you a nice C chord. So, so far, you've got two blues chords down. The G chord on the left, and the C chord anywhere. The last chord that you'll need to play the blues is just as easy as the first two. It's the D chord, built on the fifth tone of the G scale. And it's played by drawing on the holes four, five, and six in the middle of your harmonica. So, to review, here are the three chords that you'll need to play the blues. The G chord, C chord, and the D chord. Review these three chords on your own before I show you how they are used to play the blues. Most blues can be played using the three chords that you've just learned. Here's how it works. You start off with the G chord. And then you change to the C chord. Then you go back to the G chord. Now you go to the D chord. Followed by the C chord. And finally back home to the G chord. Well, that's the blues. See how much music this harmonica can play with just three chords? Now, before you go any further, practice those chords until you've memorized the entire blues progression. This chart shows the order of the three chords for the basic blues progression in G. You can refer back to this part of the video whenever you need to review it. Later, you may play the blues with people who will add more chords in between these. But this is the basic chord progression, the one that all the others are based on. Here we go. Now, all I did there was a shuffle rhythm to the G chord. Nothing tricky. Now, you can use the same rhythm on the C chord. And, of course, the D chord, too. Now, remember that these three chords and the progression that you've just learned are the foundation for the blues. So let's play some blues with the band.
Now that you've got the blues chord progression under your belt, practice the chords using the shuffle rhythm on your own with the band. When you play a blues solo, you'll be playing short phrases that are called licks. These are closely related to the chords that you've just learned. For example, here's a lick that works with the G chord. This next lick will work with the C chord. Right here, you remember, the G chord comes back and you play the first lick again. Now, here's a lick you can use on the D chord. Coming around the other side of the blues progression, you can try playing this new lick with the C chord. And here's a lick that you can use on the G chord at the end of the progression. Now, if you've practiced all five of those licks, you should be ready for your first blues solo. Don't worry if these licks sound a little different each time that you play them. That's the idea. You use them to kind of spark your own imagination. So you can hold some of the notes longer if you like, or even skip a few notes. Eventually, you'll make up your own blues licks that will express how you feel inside. Okay, are you ready to give it a try? The first time through the progression, I'll lead the way. I'll play a lick, and then you kind of echo it using the same notes. Then we'll repeat the whole progression over again, and you take the lead.
Okay, this is it. Your chance to really express your feelings through your harmonica. Here's the entire band accompaniment all by itself for you. Use the licks you've learned or make up some new ones. Try some vibrato, some tone bending, or anything that you feel. Feel the blues. Play the blues. All right? Let's go. Well, I hope you've had a great time with this video and that you enjoy practicing with it again. Just remember to always dissect a song by learning each phrase before you go on to the next one. Don't be in a big hurry to play everything. Take your time. Work at it. Get the phrases down just the way you feel them. Now, of course, we all know that music is for your ears, but I must tell you that whenever I play my harmonica, I envision scenes. I envision colors. I know, you're probably thinking to yourself, scenes, colors? What in the world is he talking about? You can't see music. Well, if you close your eyes and focus in on the sounds you're making, you'll start thinking of sounds as images within your mind. Then you can transfer those images into music through your harmonica. So, with that thought in mind, I thank you very much and wish you the best of luck. All right, what do you say we play some blues? <laughs> 